Krishna Prabhu Ji, Dandavar Pranam. Hello. Uh, can you hear us Prabhu Ji? I can hear you. Okay. Uh, are you going to enable your video Prabhu Ji? So we're ready to start? Yes Prabhu Ji. We are broadcasting into the YouTube, so once you enable the video, uh, you can get started. Yeah, we can see you, Prabhuji. Thank you. Please let me know when you're ready. We are ready, probably. First of all, thank you to Harvey Las Prabhu and devotees of ISKCON of Western Washington for inviting me to say a few words about my dear friend of more than 40 years, Srila Bhakti Chiru Swami Maharaj. Like many of us, I've just been trying to muster all my willpower to return to coherence and routine seva after days of immeasurable sorrow punctuated by numerous bouts of sobbing. The loss of His Holiness Bhakti Chiru Swami Maharaj is, is intolerable to me. I first met Maharaj in the late 1970s, early 80s, when I was still asphyxiating from the departure of Srila Prabhupada and uh, struggling with the ascent of the zonal acharya system in ISKCON. For me at that time, Bhakti Chu Swami was like a breath of fresh air. I was preaching in Switzerland at that time, and uh, he came to visit. And um, from that point on, we've been friends, and our paths have crossed many, many times in different parts of the world. He was a breath of fresh air because he helped revive me. He helped give me breath to breathe. And now, my dear friend belongs to the ages with great Vaishnava saints. At different times in my life, it seemed that Krishna sent Bhakti Chiru Swami in my way. He was kind of like um, a modern day Narada Muni because just like 
in the Bhagavatam, we see when many personalities get into trouble or are perplexed or there's a crisis, Narada Muni would show up and he would preach. And um, in similar fashion, from that very beginning, after Prabhupada passed, Bhakti Tru Swami kept appearing in my life in many different ways. Um, there was a time when I was on the GBC with him, but I, I didn't feel that my service on the GBC at that time was, was meaningful for different reasons. And I decided to go to law school, and I became an attorney, a devotee attorney, which was still kind of rare, although there were already some. And Maharaj was always very encouraging. He understood the value of a professional education, engaged in the service of Krishna. He understood that we can acquire skills, there is nothing wrong with that. It's only wrong when we are stingy in offering our skills to Krishna. And I often wondered how that skill would become meaningful for our society. The one that Maharaj was very, very protective of. And I prayed to Prabhupada, dear Srila Prabhupada, please show me a way to use this skill in a big way. I've always had a weakness for doing something big. And I thought perhaps with the lawyering skills that, that might be also possible. Then one day, I got a phone call from Bhakti Tru Swami Maharaj and Shesha Prabhu. Both of them were on the phone. And Maharaj said to me, you know, we're having some trouble in New York City. And um, we probably need a good lawyer. And we also need a good devotee as well. And Shesha Prabhu and I were wondering if you might not um, be willing to help. It all sounded so special to me because that's not the kind of call I was in the habit of getting. And frankly, that's not always the kind of call that our leadership makes. And I said, what's, what's the problem? And so they both explained to me that they were on um, the executive committee and that they are looking to prevent the sale of the New York temple. And um, ultimately, not right away, but they also asked if I could oust, which means to remove legally the board of directors of the temple that sold the temple, put it under contract, without the knowledge of the congregation or the approval of the GBC. So I thought, this is incredible. This is the answer to my prayers. It doesn't get any bigger. This is the temple that Prabhupada started, the movement's birthplace, the destination of Srila Prabhupada's epic Jaladuta journey. And and then I, my mind wandered to a recollection of Prabhupada telling the story of how Keshava Maharaj asked him to take sannyas. He said, no one can preach without taking sannyas, Prabhupada recounted. And Prabhupada said, and I thought, how horrible, because I was a grihasta at the time. And then Prabhupada said, in narration years later, he said, but then I realized that this was extraordinary. And it was not 
just my god brother speaking to me. It was really my guru Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati, speaking through the mouth of my god brothers, telling me, do this. And the fact that my mind wandered to that meant that that's how I understood what was going on. That it, it wasn't just Srila Bhakti Chiru Swami Maharaj speaking to me, it was Prabhupada through him. And uh, of course I said yes. And then we were a team. I had my best opportunity to serve with Maharaj because he was um, the first vice chairman of the GBC and then he became the chairman. And um, we organized a town hall meeting, a Brooklyn town hall meeting that took place in the Brooklyn Public Library, which we had rented. And I have a little video clip in two parts. And I would ask Namavrata to play the first part up to 55 seconds right now. Vishnupadaya, Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale, Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamine, Namaste Sharashate Deve Gauravani Pracharine, Nirvishesha Shunavadi Paschata Deshatarine, Srila Prabhupada Ki. To see that these kind of things are happening, devoted. Shall I continue now? Yes, Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhuji. Okay. So, leading kirtan, preaching, endearing himself to the devotees, we all know those wonderful attributes of Srila Bhakti True Swami Maharaj. He, um, very sweet, a very kind devotee. He was not a taker, he was a giver. And uh, he was a caregiver to the devotees. I think that the tidal wave of emotion and heartache felt around the world is because whoever came in contact with Maharaj felt that he cared. He would often ask devotees a lot of, he would listen to their personal situation. He would get to know them. He was like the sun shining down on each of us and we were bathed in the warmth of his light and it felt so wonderful. But we, like someone 
in the sunlight, you don't really consciously are aware that the sun is shining on everybody and everybody is feeling the same way because you're just so immersed in that moment. Uh, so he touched everybody's hearts uh, everywhere. And, um, but he wasn't just soft and sweet. He could be like fire too, when he had to be. Not just a, a soft, gentle velvet glove. He could also be an iron fist in a velvet glove. And now I'd like to play the, ask Numbretta to play the second part um, of the little video clip. This is Bhakti Tru Swami now speaking on how he feels about the fact that the flagship temple, the original temple founded by Prabhupada, New York City, that is, was being sold. And if you would play that segment now, please. To see that these kind of things are happening, devotees are being banned from the temple, did Srila Prabhupada establish ISKCON all over the world just for that? It's very, very unfortunate. And I can, I can assure you that we are going to take it up in ISKCON, GBC, and we are trying to do, are we going to do something like that? This statement of mine is not as a member of this committee, but as the chairman of the GBC body. So let's just follow Srila Prabhupada's lotus feet and let us continue to fulfill his desire by spreading Krishna consciousness all over the world. Thank you all very much. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, video is complete. Yeah. So, Bhakti Chu Swami Maharaj was the complete devotee. He could be soft and gentle and caring, and he could also be tough as nails, but always in a gentlemanly way, but you could sense the emotion there when he was speaking, because for him, Prabhupada's society really did mean everything. However difficult sometimes we may find it to live in ISKCON and serve in ISKCON, he understood that that's what Prabhupada wanted because outside of ISKCON that Prabhupada built, who, who is spreading pure Krishna consciousness untinged by impersonalism and voidism and sense gratification? So... Maharaj used to sometimes say that I'm Srila Prabhupada's dog, so sometimes I must bark. And he barked in Brooklyn on a month after, a month and a half after the town hall meeting that you saw in the video, Bhakti Sri Swami, now the chairman of the GBC, visited Brooklyn Temple personally to deliver a letter from the GBC to the temple president who had organized the sale, informing him that he had been removed as president and advising the congregation of that. And he was not welcome there. The president didn't want to receive him. When Maharaj tried to say a few words, they cut the microphone so he couldn't talk. Then when Maharaj tried to lead Kirtan, they turned out all the lights in the temple room so it was black. You couldn't see anything. Then the temple president, no longer, but still trying to pretend he was, announced that all the devotees had to leave the temple or else they would be trespassing. 
And then he called the police. <laughs> you should have seen Maharaj. He was a steady general leading the troops. He was not deterred. And then he led Kirtan anyway. And the intensity of the Kirtan was amazing. Um, so he was the complete devotee for all circumstances and all times. And although he may not physically be with us, that does not change. That does not change at all. Um, Prabhupada said to us that our love for him would be demonstrated by how we cooperate with each other. I think that it's fair to say that our love for Srila Bhakti Chiru Swami Maharaj will be demonstrated by how we care for each other personally, individually. Because every single devotee is the most important devotee. That's how we should feel. That's how he made us feel when he associated with us. And his legacy lives on when we carry his torch by behaving in that same way. Um, many of us ask, you know, how, how could this happen? How could this happen? What happened? Um, I think we will always have that question. Surely it has increased our love for him. Surely Krishna had a plan. But as we know from Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, ninth chapter, verse 16, O king, no one can know the plan of Lord Sri Krishna. Even though great philosophers inquire exhaustively, they are bewildered. So it is a bewildering time, but everyone comes and everyone goes. Bhakti Tirtha Swami Maharaj came and left us. Tamal Krishna Goswami came and left us. Now Bhakti Tru Swami Maharaj has come and left us. One of my god brothers, Harvey Lassa's got our god brothers, said to me recently that the departure of Bhakti Tru Swami Maharaj has ushered in the coming decade of tears. Because many will depart within the coming years. And this is a very difficult test because we feel so helpless, helpless. We're not used to feeling helpless. In the material world, no one likes to feel helpless. We like to be in control, but we're not. And as devotees, we know that feeling helpless means depending on Krishna. We have many different stories from Bhagavatam about devotees who were protected by Krishna when they helplessly felt surrendered to the Lord. So let us take shelter of Krishna and Prabhupada and the Vani of Srila Bhakti Chiru Swami Maharaj. Let us never forget him. I still marvel that I was able or that Krishna allowed me to have a friend who was a saint, a friend and a saint. So all glories to Srila Bhakti Chiru Swami Maharaj. And thank you for inviting me to speak a few words. It's especially uh, <clears throat> dear to me. Because Ahari Vilas Prabhu, for those of you who may not know, is my Bartmana Pradarshika guru. In 1971, I came to Paris, recently graduated from university, 
in history of art. And I got a Bhagavad Gita, and I came to the little temple where Hai Vilas was president. And one month later, I was shaved up in a devotee, thanks to him. And those of you who know him also know that he is a follower of Bhakti Chiru Swami by his personal caring for each devotee. So this was very special, and thank you for having me. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you, Prabhuji, for a wonderful lecture. And uh, we are very fortunate to have you in this. So we uh, broadcast it live in our YouTube channel. So we'll share you the link, Prabhuji. Can I can I leave now? Is is that is that time to leave? Um. Yeah. Just uh, let me see if anyone has any questions, uh, Prabhuji. Okay. One question in the YouTube viewers, uh, Prabhuji. Uh, uh, question is, why Maharaj has to go like this way? Why Maharaj has to leave us like this? Well, that's what it means that the plan of the Lord cannot be understood. He went this way because it was the plan of Krishna. Why did Maharaj Purikit have to get bitten by a snake? Why did Why did Prabhupada have to leave? Why? Why, 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 why? But if you keep thinking about anything related to Maharaj, his wonderful activities, and you feel separation from him, then that's a gift. You know, the material circumstances are always different, always endlessly mutable, and we almost go sometime. Why this time if, and not that time? Why that time and not the other time? You know, in the material world, we say it's above our pay grade, so to speak. So I, I don't pretend to have an exact answer to that question. Um, He's with Prabhupada. He's with Krishna. He did not attach much importance to being in this world. He did not attach importance to this material body. If you listen to what he lectured lately, even his last lecture, before he knew that he, his body had contracted COVID, he was not attached. He said, this is just an old car. That's all. This body. That's the best I can do, Prabhu. But he was ready. Maybe that's the real point. He was ready. He was ready to go to Krishna. He was ready for the next service. He was not attached to this world. And we speak all the time about, I'm not this body, I'm not this body. But, you know, there will come a time when you'll have to prove that you're not just, that we're not just parrots repeating something. Not just that we know it, but we've realized it. Because, as Prabhupada said, when the devotees were weeping, as Prabhupada lay on his final bed, skin and bones, if you will, and they were all crying. And Prabhupada opened his eyes. He was lying down. He opened his eyes. He looked up at his disciples around him, all grief-stricken. 
And Prabhupada said, don't think that this won't happen to you. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Prabhuji. Thank you for explaining. Years ahead. Hare Krishna. I would like to ask a, a question, Guru Guranga Prabhu. Thank you very much for a very wonderful testimony of the of your relationship with Bhakti Chur Maharaj. And his yeah, I don't see any other questions in the live, Prabhuji. Okay. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you for the wonderful okay. sharing the wonderful memories. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.